Welcome back to MongoDB Local, everybody. You're watching The Cube. Our live coverage, wall-to-wall, -wall, actually a full day. This used to be a two-day event, now it's a one-day event. We're here in New York City, the Big Apple. You know, it's a great time of year. We saw the Knicks play the other night. They went into overtime. They, they're now going go to go invade Philly. The, the Rangers, they, they got through. They swept the Capitals. You got the Islanders. They got swept. And, uh, of course, the, the most exciting two minutes in sports this weekend, May, is such a great month, the Kentucky Derby. But we're here covering MongoDB Local, and we're going to do the analyst angle just coming off the keynotes. We're here with Sanjeev Mohan, who's the principal at, at Sanjmo, former Gartner analyst. And Carl Olofsson is a principal database analyst, senior Senior DB analyst at IDC, probably a VP if I botched your title, but... Uh, research VP. Research VP, awesome, which means you don't have to manage a ton of people and do, do all those uh, performance reviews. You can just focus on your research. Gents, welcome back to theCUBE. Great you. to see you both. It's great to Thank be you. back. All right, Carl, let's start with you. Same question to you, Sanjeev. Carl, first, mm. keynote. What were your takeaways? What'd you think? Let's riff on it. Well, I felt that Dev struck all the right tones uh, in his speech. He talked about the things that I expected him to talk about. Um, it, was a good, it was a good talk overview of where the company is going and how the products are developing. And, um, and then Sahir got into the details, you know, with the various technical improvements that they're, that they're going after. I felt that, and, and this is a common thing with MongoDB, they're very much aimed at the developer. So they're talking to the developer, this, basically saying, this is what we're doing for you. You know, this is a, all aimed at the developer. So it's not aimed at the high-end str strategic planner or the head of uh, the CIO or something like that. They're talking to the development organization. I mean, a lot of people, Sanjeev, would say that they need to expand their messaging beyond the developer, start speaking more wallet, you know, to, in order to continue to grow. I don't know if you agree with that, but your take on the keynote. So I liked what Dave said. Uh, two things that I really liked. One is this thing that he said Sequoia came up with called the crucible moment, yeah, yeah. which is a decision a uh, decision you make today will have an outsized impact down the road that you may not even see. So the, his whole thing was that AI is that moment. It's really revolutionary. And the fact that most companies don't want uh, Mickey Mouse kind of like use cases because they're not transformational like a chatbot. They want, like, you know, examples of Novo Nordisk reducing their time from 10 days to minutes. You know, that is what... And the other thing I liked was where he said that anytime a new technology comes up, the value is generated at the bottom most layer, which is the infrastructure. And we're seeing that with NVIDIA's and uh, AI uh, model developers. But the real value happens at the topmost layer, which is the applications. So the fact that they've announced this MongoDB AI applications program is, is quite, uh, quite a good thing. Yeah, it was interesting. He, he's somewhat um, reframing the, the AI stack. On, on, yeah. on the earnings call, he talked about the three layers, the, the, the infrastructure layer, the, the trading, tooling, tooling, layer. tooling layer, and, and then the, the apps layer. Correct. And, and he even said, we don't really play in layer one. Yeah. We play in, but the chart he showed today had Mongo right in the middle, yeah. which was kind of interesting. And is there, I mean, the big news here is their map program map. where they're bringing together the application. Correct. I look at this as a way to bring their customers into that second and, and third layer. Do you guys see it the same? Yeah, because it's, it's, a, it's a partnership that includes... But all the major players, all the three hyperscalers, all the integration players like uh, Langchain and Llama Index, model uh, players like Anthropic, and then also it includes uh, professional services uh, companies to deliver uh, solutions. Yeah, so it's a tricky thing because you have a bunch of moving parts here. You want to make it sound simple. In fact, he repeated yeah. it several times. We want to make things simpler. And, and yet the, the picture is inherently complicated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I want to ask you, Carl, about um, the whole rap on Vector. So here it talked about, yeah. and, 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 and Dave as well sort of referenced it. And Sanjeev, I'm, I'm sure you have thoughts as well. You know, and we certainly hear this from a lot of vendors that are integrating Vector into their database, that it's really a feature, not a product. I, I tend to agree with that, although... You know, I see this TechCrunch article with all these vector 
search companies getting all this VC money now. And so what's your take as somebody who's watched the database industry for uh, since you were in high school? Well, <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts on the, is there value on standalone vector or would you advise customers, and it's probably an it depends answer, to really sort of think about integrating? Well, it does depend on what problem you're trying to solve. I mean, if you're, but I do believe that ultimately vector technology will be integrated with other AI technologies. It won't be sold as a product in of itself, okay? But you'll have vector that's being used for general text uh, AI and that kind of thing, where you just ask an English language question and it and sweeps through the language, large language model and pu pulls together an answer based on your question. And then there's the more specific database-centric uh, question or, or service, you know, whether, whatever it is, that involves, um, that, invo that requires for one thing a more grounded model because you don't want, you don't want it to go off in space and, you know, a look at irrelevant things and also that it needs to be focused on what is actually there. In other words, when I ask a question about what's in the database, I have, there are two things that have to happen. One is that the response needs to be relevant to my question, and the other is that the answer has to be absolutely positively correct. It can't be approximately correct. It can't be vaguely sort of, yeah, maybe. It has to be absolutely correct, because databases are, data is either right or wrong. There's no in between. And, and so, is that, uh, do I infer from that that good enough is not good enough in certain use cases, and that's where you would use the standalone vector database as an example, or not necessarily? Well, when you use a, ve a standalone vector database, I mean, in other words, if I'm, a, if I'm looking to gauge, say I'm asking a question about, uh, you know, customer sentiment. How do people think out there in the world about this or that kind of product or concept? It can come back with a textual answer that is close enough to be right that I can use that as information. But if I ask, you know, uh, what are the factors that caused uh, production to increase in the last quarter and by how much, those numbers have to be correct. They can't be approximate. And in that case, you really want a vector system that is close to the database that is that is actually part of the system. How do you think about this, Sanjeev? So like in security, yeah. you know, the recent data from ETR shows the number of security vendors actually increasing, yeah. not decreasing. And when we ask them why, they say because we need to fill gaps, we need best of breed. Are there, my question, if you take that concept, does it apply to databases or are there too many database types? There's graph, there's, there's, yeah. there's, 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 there's time series, there's vector. Do we need, do, do customers need to simplify or is it really they need best of breed to fill gaps, drive revenue, drive productivity? What are your thoughts on that? It's a very interesting conundrum mm. because typically I, I feel the technology sector moves in tandem, like, you know, was good for the good is good for the gander, but not in this case. I think security people ha are very, very particular because it's black and white. But in the database, I, I think you see more consolidation opportunities than you see in security. I don't think anyone wants to have more and more components of the data architecture than what we have today. So, so I, the things are different, you know, I, I don't see, uh, you, you were right, you know, by saying that use cases will determine whether you need a standalone vector search database or not, but more or less, it's better for the vector capability to be close to my corporate data. And my corporate data is sitting in a document model, it's sitting in relational, it's sitting in graph and spatial. So I think it's much better that they are co-located rather than they're in a separate database. So I'm having to ETL. Like even if there's zero ETL or whatever it may Which be. Which really isn't. It's still ETL, yeah, it's just automated. ETL, <laughs> you're just automating and, and hiding the yeah. complexity. You don't, because every time you go from one stack, one system to another, you've got to deal with some overhead, latency, security loopholes, so I see there's more consolidation in the database world, may not be in security. Yeah, so that should bode well, Carl, for a company like Mongo. I wonder, you know, IDC gives a lot of thought to markets, of course. How do you think about Mongo's TAM? I mean, at the highest level, you got operational database and analytical databases, and, you know, folks will, Dave will say, well, we don't participate in this, you know, we don't compete against Snowflake and, and Databricks. At the same time, they provide analytics, but how do you think about their TAM? I mean, they're a roughly $2 billion company, call it. Um, a lot of people think, wow, Mongo's got a huge TAM. They should be growing faster than what they're saying, or they, 
They should be a bigger company. What, what are your thoughts on their market opportunity? Yeah, there's, um, there's no consistent view as to what the future opportunity for document database is, okay? Um, and you mentioned operational versus analytical. And there's kind of like a water's edge for them with analytical because they're a document database. They don't, by nature, combine data in the ways that you need to do analytics. So they have to partner for that. So, But they can be more clever in the way that they enable people to pull the data that they need and reorganize it into uh, an analytical format, even if they do drop it into a data warehouse or something like that. So there is there's plenty of opportunity to take them a little bit beyond the, the space that they've been playing in up to this point. So, uh, Carl, uh, uh, do you remember in the last few uh, e events, MongoDB dot local events, they used to talk about a product called MongoDB Data Lake. They used to talk about Data Mesh. I don't see that. Yeah, they didn't in, mention anything like that. Right. Here. In fact, last year, a very big announcement, or the year before, was a native SQL driver. Right. That's right. In fact, so, yes. And they didn't mention that either. This is right. a. This seemed like an exciting capability where they could map data into columns and you could execute right. SQL statements yeah. against it. We didn't hear about that this time. It may be that they're finding that they're getting more traction by working cooperatively with people like Databricks and Snowflake mm -hmm. than trying to do it themselves. And then, what do you, you call it? Because there's a SQL, I, I, in my mind, SQL converter or SQL migrator. Right. Yeah, so that's, that's, what you're that's, that's the, the relation of migrator. Relation to migrator. That's a different from, thing. Yeah, that's yeah, 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 migrating yeah. from a relational right. database to a document database. And when they talk about it, they don't ever mention Oracle, but they're really talking about Oracle. Yeah. That's the big whale. Or, or, may, or maybe Postgres. Well, everybody, everybody is. Right. The whole cottage industry around <laughs> moving from Oracle. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. And yet Oracle continues to grow. Yep. Um, what are your thoughts on, on RAG, but specifically moving beyond RAG. I mean, RAG is actually not that hard to do. Yeah. Um, people are finding, yeah, it's nice. Yeah. But we, you know, to the earlier points that were made in the keynote, that the ROI isn't really with the chatty stuff. Correct. It's really going beyond that. And those yeah. examples that you give, Nova Nordis, et cetera, there's a lot of them when you come to conferences like these. There's, you know, there's dozens, but in the grand scheme of things, it's pretty small. It's yeah. not big enough to move the market today. So, how do you see RAG adoption and moving beyond RAG to get higher levels of value? And how long is that going to take? One of my favorite topics uh, is exactly what you just said. It's the, the topic is how do I get uh, AI to work on my corporate data? RAG was the first iteration that really took off. And in my opinion, I think RAG, we, we fixed it. We, we, we know how to do RAG. Now we need to move our thinking beyond RAG. I said, is there something else we can do? For example, the, uh, before RAG, there was a huge topic about prompt engineers, how, how important prompt engineering is. And I really think prompt engineering is ridiculous. Big snore. <laughs> yes. No, because, because prompt engineering is basically a new query language. You know, that's what- Yeah, it, exactly. And, and how, <laughs> how, how does one know what is a good prompt? So I, I, what the future is going to be, maybe hopefully later this year, the cost is coming down of inference is some sort of a uh, combination of fine tuning and drag. So you take uh, a model, it has to be open source because you need to know the model weights, and then you basically train it uh, or you fine tune it with some additional layers, corporate data, and then you, you do a rag on that because rag by itself is getting us to a point but not beyond. Fine tuning will help a little bit more. Also, in context learning, which is like Chat GPT has introduced this concept of sending a file with my prompt. This is brand new, it came out last week, which means I may have a CSV file and I say, here is my, my templated SQL and the response for different questions, learn from this, so in context learning, and now answer my question. So this is the expanding ecosystem and why MongoDB's map is important, because it's not just about vector search, it's about vector search, RAG, fine tuning, in context learning, prompting, few shot, many shot, all of that is needed to be successful. And that's a, that's a packaged, curated Correct. capability Correct. that, Correct. It, it, uh, presumably confers competitive advantage 
to them and takes advantage of all the bedrock. You know, except that the technology is still evolving. Yes. So or because no, the technology is evolving and is not static, that means that the, the techniques we know today may not work as well in the future. There'll be new yeah. techniques that work better. Oh, completely. Um, so are they going through a one-way door potentially? Or well, how do they it's think always the challenge. that has to be managed. When you're, when you're an early adopter, you're taking that risk, right? Am I going down the right path? Or am I going down the wrong path? Or is it slightly wrong, you know? I mean, those... So, so there's, you're 100% right. The whole AI space is evolving so rapidly. In fact, there's even a uh, discussion these days that have we outlived the transformer architecture? Because if you know, you know, transformer came out in 2017 when mm -hmm. Google engineers wrote attention is all you need. But do you, is attention really all you need or maybe what's next? There are some new technologies, Mamba is one of them. So yeah. it's going to change. Right now in the database world, there are three things that database systems can do. They can help you write a schema. They can, they can help a developer write an application. And they can help an end user find data, uh, generate the SQL or whatever query language it's appropriate for the database they're using, whether it's Cypher or something else, to find the data they need, if they're, even if they're not technical people. Those are the three values that they have. But what people you really want, and I, I gave a speech back in, uh, 20 years ago at Directions at IDC, in which I said what people really want is the Star Trek computer. They want to just be able to ask a question. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, wow. and, 20 and, years ago you said that. Yeah, and then wow. get an answer. And... Uh, we're yeah. long, and, the, the, and I said, and we're a long way from that, you know. <laughs> there the, you are. We're, we're, in order for, for this, we're getting closer, but in order for systems to actually, for, for and to AI systems to actually understand enough about what's in the database to, uh, to, to give you that level of capability, you need a lot more metadata. You need a lot more uh, information that gives it the context because there's no semantics in structured data. None whatsoever. There isn't human language, and that's how that's what drives the way these systems work. Because ChatGPT and Perplexity, they have all the data on the internet, but it's the context right. that they're lacking. And I mean, but your prediction is actually. Not, I mean, we're kind of there with even search today. Think about how much search has evolved. It, you know, with, I think people say, "Oh, this is like the early days of dial-up." Maybe it is. Yeah, maybe it's good. I got to ask you guys. This headline that he put, I put this tweet out. <laughs> it said, "Internet may be just a passing fad." as millions give up on I crossed out yeah. internet and put AI. Um, you know, there's a lot of similarities. I don't want to over-rotate on, you know, the dot-com bubble, because every bubble is different. But you remember, you guys remember, it was it was Lycos, it was Yahoo, all the yeah. portals, it was CMGI, and it was VCs paying companies to advertise on portals, and those portals were, stocks were going through the roof, and it, and then the whole thing blows up, and who comes out of it alive and, and thriving is Amazon, Google, you know, PayPal, uh, social media years later. Do you see a similar trend happening today where you have all this CapEx? Yeah. The hyperscalers have, you know, they got to so much money they know what to do with it, so they buy in GPUs like crazy. NVIDIA is, what did Dave say, they had the greatest quarter in the history of quarters. Yeah, right, correct. Ever, right? And so there's a lot of money changing hands within the, the, the insulated echo chamber of the tech world. You know, do you see that? as a similar pattern to so, 99, 2000. So IDC research has shown in this area that there's a lot of interest out there in the world in AI and in building AI capability. There's a lot of ignorance as to how to go about it, and there's little appetite for spending money on it. So what that tells me is that this is going to be a slowly evolving thing, but expectations will go like this, the actual development process will go like this, people will get frustrated. So, so here is my thinking. We are, all three of us are old enough to have lived actively through the dot-com boom. It was awesome. It was amazing. <laughs> Irrational exuberance, please bring it back. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, uh, if you remember, one of the big shocking disasters, there were many of them, uh, but one of them was WebVan. WebVan, in fact, I had a green box for, like, grocery delivery that came out in 1998, 1999, and it was an utter disaster failure. But then what happened? Quietly, the technology ex uh, matured, yes. and today we've got Instacart. Well, is, and that's exactly my point. You know, yeah. 
they had a lot of the right ideas, but yeah. they yeah, didn't right. have all the supporting uh, yeah. technology right. to yeah. make it to make it work. And the economics didn't work. And then when the VC right. money dried up, they could they couldn't get the bridge. The but, other thing, by the way, that totally changed the picture was smartphones, because now. Because I don't go to my computer to order groceries or to order food. Oh, well. I go to my smartphone. Yeah. You know, that's totally changed the, the whole... And that came seven years, seven, eight yep. years after right. the, the dot-com bubble. But you're right, Pets.com, now Chewy, yep. is doing great. You got yeah. storage networks. You know, most people don't never heard of storage networks. Right. That became the cloud. Yeah. What they were doing was they were taking, they were taking storage boxes... Right, you know, a little bit of EMC, a little bit of compact, whatever. Just running data centers, hosted data centers. They just didn't have the economics until you know Amazon so, came along. So you know, uh, there was this very famous example uh, just uh, a month or two ago, where Air Canada had a fear that they published, yep. and then it was a mistake, and everybody said, "Look, Gen AI does not work." Or oh, it turned out, literally a month later, Air Canada said there was no Gen AI. Right. So, so this is the kind of, yeah. you know, narrative we are hearing. Now, you know, there's also another very famous case where this car dealership, General Motors car dealership, put a chatbot uh, up, and some guy went and said, which is the best truck to buy? And the answer was Ford 150, uh, F-150. So people said, look, you should not be doing Gen AI. And my thinking is that kudos to the car dealership that they, they put that uh, chat GPT uh, API to to do this now. What they instead of of course the sales guy would say, oh, it's hallucinating. Yeah. <laughs> so and, but instead of retracting, I hope what this car dealership says: lesson learned, ground the answers in our database. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Then they'll be ahead of the pack. This is that's the again yeah. a lot of work involved in making sure that the responses stick to the subject and that yeah. within the range of, inf of possible right. answers. Yep. And that, that is still, a lot of times when you get to the point where, pe where you say, okay, now people have to do some work, then the, the enthusiasm dries up, dries up right? Yeah. So do you, do you think, bringing it back to sort of the, the a AI era, uh, do you feel like LLMs get commoditized, uh, that, that we'll see all the hype around sort of the picks and shovels and you know, you saw Anthropic up on stage today. Their valuation's going through the roof. Do you feel like that's going to be suppressed? And, and Dave Itachiria's premise that the real, real value is going to be at the application level, layer. Do you guys buy that premise? And how long do you think yeah. it's going to take? Uh, first of all, I think that the, the language models will be more specialized so that they are focused. If I'm going to do search on medical information, that's the only terminology I need to have in the system. I don't need to have, you know, latest, the latest sports scores and all this other stuff, you know. Um, so there's, so there's that. At the application level, I, I think it's, it's really a question of focusing the system on the problem to be solved and then focusing the application on what problems the system can solve, making those all work in harmony. So there's definitely an application level challenge involved. On Hugging Face, every week, there are 10,000 new models. 10,000. It's the, I think I haven't checked the number in the last few days. I think it's about 600,000 models. So I don't think we, uh, when it comes to large language models, and the, I define those as like 100 billion parameters or more, like 400 billion for Llama 3 is coming out with a new one. Uh, I, I think that scale should not be done by database companies. That scale should be done by the hyperscaler, Meta, yes. OpenAI, right. the Anthropic, Coheo. Well, what the database Mistral. vendors can do is database companies should their like code should fit coach into the people into, fit into that frame. Yeah, coach people in how to create a better, more secure, resilient. AI application. That should be their job. Oracle, MongoDB, Databricks, Snowflake, this is what they should be since doing. Since you mentioned security, there is a looming security issue here, mm -hmm. which is that with AI systems just combine randomly anything that's, in, that's out there, including what's in your systems, it could accidentally put together information that reveals in, uh, things that yep. you don't want to reveal. Yep. Right. Correct. You know, and that's that could be a serious problem. We haven't heard too much about AI governance today. So no, I, I, a little bit on security, but you're, guys, so much. I, I I love having you here. I could go on in, in my ear that we got to go, but um, 
uh, and I, I'm, I'm dying to ask you some other questions about whether or not Mongo should be doing an LLM like Arctic and, and DBRX, but let's, let's save that for another day. Last question, plug some research that you guys are doing. IDC, you guys constantly doing studies. Sanjeev, you're, you're doing some deep, deep work. Carl, what do you got going that we should know about? Well, we've got the what we call the AI Council. This is the second year we've been doing it. We're generating. That is not a subscribable service. That's basically an internal service for the rest of us. But you're going to be seeing uh, AI research in all of our services that reflect what they've been finding. We continue to learn a lot from our FERS research. That that is uh, that's an acronym. I'm not going to tell you what it stands. Oh, I can tell you what it stands for. Originally, it came out. Of, never mind. What <laughs> what it. What it talks about is the uh, the spending tendencies and trends across the world, you know, broken down by re- by region and com- country mm. and technology, and um, that goes on. And uh, those things are all available. Of course, uh, in in my own personal space, I'm looking at how uh, Gen AI affects everything that has to do with database. And what does this mean? What does it mean to build a database in the Gen AI era? You know, what do you need to k- take into consideration? Right. Saji, what are you working on? My, uh, I get distracted easily, and you know that. <laughs> so this year I started with how do you create uh, a complete uh, intelligent data platform? And you sort of uh, unify structured, unstructured data. You, uh, you unify workloads, whether they are operational analytics and AI AI agent. Metadata. Meta, uh, through a, a common metadata substrate. Mm-hmm. That is a very important topic. But like I said, I get distracted. So what I'm doing now, next week, I'm, I'm speaking at a real-time analytics conference. So I'm very deep into s- screening landscape. And I and I, I find that very interesting because uh, as I talk to AI, I, I want my voice to be transcribed into text, into images. So that's streaming data. Yep. So these two need to come together, and so that. And by the way, streaming is giving time series new life, which is kind of interesting, yeah. also. Yeah. Uh, but one thing I would just like to finish off with, from my perspective, is you hear vendors at place things like MongoDB saying. The answer is simple. Just use our stuff. Okay. <laughs> well, the answer is not simple. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the simpler this industry gets, the more complicated it gets. Guys, do sharp analysts. Thanks so much for coming Thank on the so Cube. Really appreciate your time and your insights. All right. Keep it right there. We're going wall to wall today, all day. MongoDB.local from the Big Apple. You're watching the Cube. <laughs>